Hey guys, it's Garage here, back in another video. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to save a lot of money taking a car to a mechanic shop. Now, um, first, you need to check out, you know, what's the problem with the car. And my mom, my mom took it, my, uh, well, my mom took my, her van to a mechanic shop. And it was a 2006 Kia, and it needed, uh, uh, sounded like a lot of work, like almost, two thousand four hundred forty eight dollars now all that you know what come up to that amount was well you need a, a wheel alignment obviously which is like eighty dollars but you need also need some other work in the front end such as replacing the rack and pinion gear uh, pinion assembly apparently it was leaking and they want to replace the whole rack and charge two hundred dollars in labor and a power steering fluid exchange. Um, I'm not too much about that. It's pretty sure it's like uh, changing power, changing up a power steering fluid. That's like forty dollars to thirty dollars in labor. Uh, replacing wheel control arms, which is those black things. So we're replacing both. And that's one hundred and forty dollars in parts and two hundred and eighty dollars in labor. That itself is $800. And the outer tie rods, which is these right here, these parts. Oh, these are, these are uh, I think, uh, uh, slip bar linkages, but yeah, these parts right here. The tie rods. That is $225 and $120 in repairs. Now, come on, guys. That is a lot of money on a 12 uh, year old or 13 year old car. And that will come up to a grand total of two hundred and four, two thousand four hundred forty-eight dollars and eighty-one cents. Now we got our van for like two grand, so we could buy just buy another, another van. So remember, guys, do your research before paying your mechanic to repair these these repairs. And sometimes they will like lie to you because he said there's a, a, a leaking power steering rack. And if you look under the car, there is like absolutely zero leaks. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, okay. So the power steering rack is right here. This is a power steering rack. And we had a car like forever. And there's like no drippage of oil. No drippage of oil in the car, under the car, like ever. So I have no idea what that guy was saying about there being a leakage. So that shows you that, you know, sometimes they just say things and try to influence you changing a part that's not even broken and charge $600 in parts and $300 in labor. That's like $1,000 just replacing the power steering rack, which the parts are super duper expensive for compared to what I can get on eBay. Now, I know how other people will say about eBay parts, but really, $500 for replacing, lower, for just for control arms, which, you know, these, well, this whole this whole kit is like $200 on eBay, but I'm pretty sure you can get quality ones, just for local control arms for $200. So that's $200 off $500 for quality local control arms for a Kia Sedona. So that saves, that sh this should be like a 700, no, a $600 job just to replace lower control arms. Now tie rod ends, come on now. I'm pretty sure you can find these for like 100 bucks for both. And they're charging you 225 on eBay, on, on, on boys. But yeah, $100 on eBay. And these should be like 40 bucks each, but really, so again, make sure you guys do research. Now I know they probably have the you know parts in stock, yeah. and they will do it every same day, or probably in a couple days. But I'd rather just buy a parts online, and then either me or hire another guy to do it. And I'm pretty sure they'll charge less than how much is that in labor? How much is that in labor? Less than eight hundred thirty dollars labor. I bet. 
they can replace the whole thing for like 300 bucks or 400 dollars so in a grand total if i paid someone else to do it it would be like 700 wait so 200 dollars for all this plus like 400 dollars in labor yeah so like 700 dollars just to replace uh, but all the local control arms, auto arms, and the three button linkage. And compared to that, I just saved like over like $1,800 in repairs. So, yeah, so make sure you guys, you know, do some research and on parts and labor. I just want you guys to overpay. And that is it on my story on getting overpriced for just replacing simple stuff but yeah i'm gonna show you guys how to replace all these and stay tuned all right guys so to replace the well, little control arms i recommend doing your research on your car um this is a 2006 kia sedona minivan but make sure you do some research like i'm doing one on a uh, 95 camaro and I always look my, I always do some research on how to take it out and put it back in because you never know what's, what quirks you might have, you might come up with. But um, yeah, so I recommend using research and then if there are any uh, bolts involved, I recommend putting WD-40 on these bolts. So I'm running right here, WD-40 here, and WD-40 right under here. It's like a locking pin right here. You can see it right here. So I asked for it for long control arms. And thank God I had to, I don't want to replace, I take out the strut, because the strut is, to take out the strut, it's like behind the, yeah, so yeah, so I, I can't really take it out without taking this out. So I'm glad that I know how to, you know, take out the trimpation and take out the strut to replace the local control arm. And I swore the tie rod in. Again, spray up the OD40, and you just take out the nut, I'll show you guys in a bit how to take it out, a little montage, but yeah, and this too, same thing, OD40, remember guys, OD40 or any lubricant on this part too, and take it out and replace it, and that should be it, so yeah, so uh, hope you guys enjoy the montage, peace. I'm gonna take out these bolts, elbow right there. I'll put the bolt under here. And that should take out the lower control arm. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right guys, so I recommend um, getting all your sockets ready. So find uh, which bolt for your sockets so you don't have to like, it's all in one go on a trip. But um, if they're not coming out, um, put some more WD-40 in it and let it sit for a while. And it will come out eventually. But you know, make sure you guys have a right socket right tools for the job so it won't strip the nuts and make, make the job more longer. But yeah, I use a ratchet to take it out and it's already out. Yeah. Alright guys, so I finally got this thing out. It took a while, but you know, I use a ratchet, my ratchet, uh, both, both sides 19. And yeah, got it out, it took a while. And but the book got stuck, so you just need to wiggle it out after you take off that nut. And I already got this one out. See right here. Oh, you guys can see that. But yeah, I wish you guys can see that, but basically it's like a you call it but it hugs a bolt inside. Hugs it with the bolt inside of it, so you get like a bolt to get out and beat up the hammer. And lastly this, this is not coming out, so I probably need to use a blow charge to take it out. So yeah, that sucks, but you know. It happens but yeah so slowly but surely hey what's up guys all right so i got the um, little charms and it took way longer than i expected because you know i'm a dumbass dude so the busy best will happen so i was pulling this bolt the wrong way i wasted a ton of time and actually i broke the other side of a nut I'm just gonna have to re it and pull it right away. And guess what? It unbolted. So, yeah. 
how that fix i'll show you guys after i compare these two um what how i fixed it and what wrong but remember when you're doing mechanic stuff there's always a way to fix it and there's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with doing it yourself just that gotta be careful remember not to lose see it righty tidy and always need to check double check if you're doing it right, right way turning it the right way i mean but yeah so this is the old one this is the new one and you see right here there's like a rips there's like a rip right here rip right here and you can tell if you move it on the bolt you see like a little uh, crease and seam and then like a little, little gap right there it's obviously perfect brand new and this is the important part obviously this is all the space right here this is all tight right here, right here. my important part is this ball joint so look I can move this freely no problem that is bad it needs to be tight and firm and this thing this can do the whole thing and that's really firm so you know out with the old in with the new like Chris fix it say and this is where I made my mistake I was turning this from the wrong way I was pulling that way and when I, once I double checked it was already too late I actually cracked that uh that, that no, that, uh, what you call it the other side so I was turning it that way and that's turning well, it's kind of hard to explain, but I was pulling that way, and obviously it was starting it. So I had to push it back that way. I had to pull it back to loosen it. So what I did to fix that is I re-welded the little fastener, the little uh, other side, so it will catch on the frame, on the metal part right here. So I re-welded this part back into that part, and started pulling it that way, and then it started to unbolt. So I actually unbolted it, finally it did. Here's the bolt. Took forever. Took my damn ass. Remember, guys, one mistake can cost you more time. So make sure you guys do it right. Right. Uh, make sure you do it right the first time. And yeah, it's all out right here. You can tell. So ready for the new one. I just need to uh, reweld this part back in, right? And then that's it for the lower control arm. Right now, I'm to take up the sway bar and this ball joint right there. So that yeah. Alright guys, so take off the sway bar linkage, just, you know, easily, and then bolt these two bolts, you know, front and back, I mean, up and down, and it should just come out easy, and that's it. Now, I can, really, I can really tell that these are bad, because this one part is really loose, super loose, I mean, uh, super loose right here. This is, you know, pretty firm. This is obviously firm. The new ones are firm. Yeah, see, look how this top one is really firm. And this one is, like, fucking loose as hell. But, yeah. Now, again, I'll be with the new. Now, time for the, uh, uh, tire rod in, which is this part right here. I can show you if you guys see it, but, yeah, that part. That's, that's called the uh, lower tire, tire rod in. So, let me take that out. Alright guys, finally got it in. Took me forever. But I got everything perfect. As you can see, I just need to put the bolts in. Snap what's going on up. Bolt is right there. It's in. That bolt right there. It's in. Now my, my tips and tricks on putting these in and make sure you put this one first. And make sure you line up the strut to be all the way back and make sure you line up this ball joint. So I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do this first, that second, and this one last because I want this to be perfect and still. I want this to be perfect and still, and you can just move the, uh, you can just uh, move the whole assembly, all the uh, strut and all that stuff, and line it up with the ball, ball joints. Now to remove the ball joints, if you use one of these forks that I recommend, just like jam it in there with your hammer. Try it and then go up and down, then we'll come out. <sighs> but to me forever, and before you guys attempt to uh, put a new a little arm, do not take out this or well, yeah, you can, you can take out this if you want, but I, re I recommend taking out this ball gym right here but for the uh, power steering when you turn left and right because it will get in the way of you, get in, get in the way, but yeah. That's how you put in a lower frame, a lower uh, control arm. 
So all that's left, and there's any tiny little bolts up this back. And I already replaced the, this little swing link, this linkage right here. Easy, just two bolts up and down, and just line them up. Those bolts right there, yeah, just line them up, and you're good to go. All right, the last thing, last but not least, is this. I tell if these things are, are uh, bad, there it is, see? Moving along, moving around a lot. And you can tell. Oh, right. Here. These don't move like barely anything, so these need to be changed. And then you just make sure you guys count the rotations on these. But yeah, the easier is not swapping them out. So let me, let me, let me uh, go ahead and finish all this. <laughs> hey guys, so I just finished. <sighs> Took me forever, but now, time, now it's time to do the other side. But um, you know, just take your time when you do it, cause this is actually my first time doing this. Changing my control arms, changing the um, linkage right here, and changing this tie rod in. I'm gonna do uh, another video on how to change these two. I will link them in the description below, more and more in depth. But basically, on this, on the tie rod in, you basically want to count uh, when you loosen these up. Count when you, when you want to tie it. Count how many uh, uh, how many turns you did to unscrew it, so it won't be that much aligned. Now I do recommend when you put it back into the right turns, get your get your car aligned because you're gonna get it right, like just about close, but probably not perfect. But yeah. So after after done with this, I'm probably get my mom to a car uh, run her uh, get a wheel limit. But yeah, everything's tightened up. And man, it just saved me uh how much like eight hundred dollars in labor and over uh six hundred dollars in parts. But you know. Um, that's what it takes to do it yourself and save you a lot, a lot of money. One money for your pocket. But yeah, so I uh, hope you guys have a good one and see you guys next time. Also, uh, lastly, uh, why don't you guys, after you've done everything, uh, clean up your mess, you know, get ready for my next side if you have to clean the next side. And also, make sure you clean the rotor or brake fluid because look at my hand once you go black and you're go back. So make sure you clean your hands up. And make sure you clean the rotor with brake fluid and, uh, and the microfiber cloth. But that is all for this side. Now it's time for the next side. All right, guys. So I just finished uh, putting in the other side. It took me like less than an hour. I was really hustling because I knew what I wanted to do. So once you uh, really know what to do, it's really easy. You just need to, you know, you doing. You take your time and just, you know, do what you think is right. And if it's right. There's no play on the wheels. And then I did this less than an hour after I knew what to do and what to tighten and all that stuff, what to take out and all that stuff. So uh, without further ado, let's just go take it to a, for a ride. Let's go, man. All right, guys. So we're taking, we're riding, riding on the Kia. So far, so good. It's running smoothly. Mom, I'm gonna take a left turn. Mom, what do you think, mom? Pretty good. No clunking, no clunking. All right, she's we're up the road now. And usually we hear like a little clunk after you know. Hit for bumps, but not anymore. So stop right here. Take left. Take a right, left. Yup, no clunking. All we hear is just for bumps. You know, taking cars, taking the shocks and bumps, but no more clunking. All right, guys. So just a little bit of my time, and I just did a two thousand dollar job according to that one uh, shop. But yeah, so just take your time, learn. Oh god. Oh god. Big hit. Alright, anyway, but see you guys next time.